So on our last day of the class, we've got a few loose ends to still work with. We can have st still keep working much more advanced, you know, if there, there could be a part three of the class because there's so much still to learn and such. But we've uh, gained a lot of knowledge. And what I want to do is uh, talk about still the shopping cart and such, and especially the rough around the edges stuff. I've got my site open. It's got the basic 2016 theme, which is not that interesting to look at. Um, we'll, um, we'll, we'll talk about you know updating the theme and such, child themes and other stuff. But the biggest thing that I'd like to do right now <coughs> is right now all of my yummy uh, baked goods are in a page called products page. I don't like that my things are called products. They're not products. They're you know little bites of heaven. So I want to have some better name there than products page. That's a relatively easy fix. And what I've also liked to do is right now we don't have that many products. I've got one, two, three products, and they're all on one page, and that's okay. But notice it's showing the the birthday cake and the cookie and the pie. Well, okay, I've got three three products. What if I've got thirty <coughs> products? What if I've got three hundred products? At the moment, all products will show up on one page that goes on and on and on. If you look at any other shopping cart site, it's divided into sections. So we're going to do that as well, and that's relatively easy as well. So let's fix first that I don't like how it's called within the, the menu. Let's make sure we're in the dashboard. And hover over Appearance, the Appearance menu and select uh, menus. We're going to edit our menus. At the moment it shows here our menu structure of our main menu. We can have multiple menus. We've got a main menu and I think another one. We've got main menu and these are the links. That's what shows up on the left side, home, etc. And that's where it says products page and so forth. This title that appears in the link is directly tied to what the page itself is called. So when we go to New, Create Page, and we title, <coughs> title the page, that page title, in this case Products Page, is automatically used by default for your menu items. So if the product we created is, if the page we created is called Products Page, that's what it will be called in the menu but we are able to change it whenever we want like this. Click the little black triangle next to products page. This says it's a page. Click the triangle there. Navigation label. There we go. We can change that and that's what will appear on the menu. Anything we want instead of it just saying products page. So Maybe we'll call it the shop. And, that, and then that after we save it, our menu will now say the shop or shopping cart, or products, or items, or anything we want it to be. Yes? So on the welcome page, uh, are you able to call the welcome page there, but not have it appear on the top of the page? Yes, that's a, that's a little bit different. We, we can look at that also when we get to that. But eventually, right, right now mine says home. I don't quite like it saying that. Yeah, that can be edited too, but the thing is we edit that on the page itself. We'll, we'll do that soon. This is editing the menu, so I'm just going to change that to, say, the shop. Notice there's no save button there, but there is a save on the bottom right corner or top right corner. Save menu. Once you make a change, you save your menu, and then you go look at it, visit site. It's called the shop. No longer the sterile products page on the menu. On the page itself, it still says products page. So on the page itself, we need to edit that. We will eventually do so. I just want to focus on the menu for the moment. Um, this is what people will see first. I want to focus on the menu before I go on to the other details. So did everyone get that working? You just simply change the menu item, the navigation label, then you save it, and it's done. Question. Mine doesn't show up. It says uh, not found. You didn't set your rewrite module. Okay. The, um, the rewrite module is on here. It's in the handout. It says to go into a function. And then it says. 
Okay, so uh, you might have noticed that I think I've mentioned it before, and sometimes it's too subtle, but I like to have two windows open, one window for the dashboard, one window for the, for the actual visible site. Question? When you're online with an actual ISP and you try to configure patches, is there problems with that? Not really, because uh, as I've said before, really this rewrite module only matters to us with WAMP. And I think it's a bug. I hope they fix it on the next version. You don't have to deal with that on MAMP, on the Mac, and you don't have to deal with that on a real ISP. They've got it set up. We need to do that in this lab for some reason. I think WAMP has a little bug, and I hope they fix it. So if you would like to have two windows open like that, notice I've got <coughs> one window, one tab for my dashboard, and one tab for the visible site. All I do is, if you right-click, the visit site and select new tab or window, then you, ha you can have two to work with. And that's how I quickly switch back and forth. I make a change in the dashboard, then I switch to my other window and I refresh it, and then I get the latest update. That's just for me to confirm that yes, now the menu says the shop. Um, I also kind of don't like um, inside the menu, okay, we've got the shop, your account, that's fine, checkout, that's fine. We could change that. Transaction results. That sounds also, am I at a bank? What am I doing here? So perhaps in your opinion, what would be a better name here instead of transaction results? This screen appears once you successfully buy something in the cart, from the cart. So what would you think maybe a better name would that be? Hmm? If you can think of a good name, you can go ahead and change that. Instead of transaction results, something else. So maybe... Um, what purchases, it's a result of your purchases, but maybe what about this? What if we call, well, if we do change that, I was about to say, what if we call it thank you? But I'm thinking in terms of this. When someone visits transaction results, it will say thank you. I wanted to say thank you there, not transaction results. So if we change the menu, it's going to change the menu, not what's on the page. We'll do that later. So maybe confirmation might work sales confirmation let's try that and we can change this whenever we want so instead of transaction results sales confirmation anything you'd like we're not limited to only um, text. I believe I mentioned it a while ago. We can also add icons here. Um, so yes? I think the, uh, the login panel keeps coming up and says my session has expired. Please log in. It does it take minutes? For the moment, let me finish my thought here. Sure. For the moment, just keep logging in and then I'll, I'll see what's going on in just a moment. So um, we can add icons here also, not just text. I think I've mentioned it before, so I'm going to open an, another window. And let's go to the website getemoji.com. G E T E M O J I.com, get emoji. A bunch of free icons here. All you have to do is select, copy, and paste. I'm bringing this up because what if there's an interesting icon for you know, for cooking or for baking or, or for the shopping cart or maybe, you know, the icon of a, of a little bag of money or a little rocket ship or a person thanking you and stuff. So if you can't draw, you can go to getemoji.com. You know, there's hundreds of icons here. And all you have to do is just select it and, and copy it. You can also search. <coughs> So 
sales confirmation. If I scroll down, maybe I'll go to the section of you know money and such. And this one might be cute. So all you have to do is select, uh, drag and select one, and then right-click copy. It's basically text. It's not a graphic technically. It's it's a uh, it's text. So if you copy that, go back to your menu, and then I'll write your sales confirmation, and I'll right-click paste. Let me get that little icon there. And depending on the person's browser, either on their Mac, on their Windows, on their iPhone, Android, whatever, it will show them a nice icon. Here it looks black and white, a little plain, but over here it's looking a little bit more colorful and such. So depending on the person's computer, it'll show them something here. So maybe just for fun, why not visit getemoji.com for a moment and borrow a couple of those icons and add them to your menu. Then the point of that is that now you'll have maybe some little bit of visual interests be besides <coughs> the the text. So try that. Grab a couple of icons and maybe put them into the menu. Yes. That could work because that's also basically what that screen shows. So sales receipt might work. Question. In emoji, I picked up one that was black and white, but when I put it in the menu, it shows up black and yellow. It just depends on which particular web browser you're using and such. These change depending on, you know, when you visit it. Um, if you, for example, just to show you here, these these emoji are cross-platform, but every, but every um, device shows it slightly different. So, for example, the bank icon, which is a plain old little bank here, on Apple looks like that. On a Google device, it looks like that. On a Microsoft, it looks like that. Samsung. So they've all got their own version of it. So if it looks a little bit different on one screen based on another, there's nothing we can do about that, but that's fine because then it looks good for everyone's device. So like the little woman with bunny ears. It looks like this. Um, look at that. It looks like two. It's two girls with bunny ears on Apple, and then on Google, it looks... It looks like that, and then on Microsoft, like that. So everyone's got their own version of it. So whoever visits your 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 site will see the right set of icons, and it'll 
it will be visually nice and interesting. If I don't know any, if I don't have any creative skills, there's hundreds of these emojis to choose from, and it'll and people will say, "Wow, you're very talented making those icons." <laughs> Just copy and paste. So that's funny. On Apple, someone just someone just got three their third birthday. On Google, it was their fifth birthday. On Microsoft, it was their first birthday. So everyone's got their own interpretation. All right. So if you manage to change that now, your menu might be a little bit updated. Very good. What I want to do now is remember when we change the menu items, that's not necessarily changing what's on screen. I call this sales confirmation or sales receipt or whatever I want, but that's still not going to change it on the, the page itself. Let's change that over here. I'm on the dashboard, and these screens that we're looking at here, the shop screen, your account screen, those screens are pages. If you're in the dashboard, go to your, click on pages, click on pages menu item, Go there and it will show you all the pages we have. And I said this as, as soon as we installed the shopping cart plugin, I mentioned that, and it's in the notes. I mentioned that what happens is the plugin adds a lot of stuff to your site in addition to right here products page, page, checkout page, transaction results page, your account page. So these are the actual pages that display that stuff. The menu is separate. But the first time you add a page to a menu, it just takes the name of the page. You can further edit your menu to call it what you want. To change what's on the screen, let's start first with transaction results. If you hover over transaction results and click edit, so hover over and then click edit, the actual page itself doesn't really have anything. It has what is known as a short code. Short code is a little bit of, of code that a plugin gives you, or a theme gives you, or a widget gives you, WordPress itself gives you. Basically, the software gives you these short codes that instead of me designing and constructing something complex, it's all consolidated into this one code. Basically, if I use that code, transaction results, anywhere on my site, it will build a receipt. It will take a receipt from a person's latest shop shopping experience and show it on screen. That's what a short code is. It displays something quickly. Therefore, our sales confirmation screen, it says, sorry, this transaction was not accepted. Click here to go back. That is automatically getting, rep that replaces what that is there. If there was a successful sh uh, sale, then that will show what was sold and, and everything. So there's not much we do with this, but what we can do is change the title up here. Transaction results. That's what's appearing on screen. Transaction results. We can call it, you know, what we've got in the menu. Sales confirmation. That's the title. That's what will appear at the top of the screen. Sales receipt, whatever I want. Click update on the right. Visit site. So I made a change, I click update, and now I'll go visit site, and I should see that it has the title that I asked it for, sales confirmation. Up there I can also put emoji, basically anywhere. Emoji is, is text, are, are fonts. They, they are basically universal, as we saw on the site there. And right here, I, I uh, change the text and added the emoji, which treats it as text. There we go. Okay. Not a little now, this is a three part thing. One part is editing the menu to make it say what you want, the other part is editing the title of the page to say what you want on screen there. And the third thing is editing the address. <coughs> the address. Notice my address at the top still says transaction results. So the very first time you do, for example, new page, it's empty here. 
there's no title, there's no address, and it's not on the menu. When you create a brand new page and it asks you fill in a name here in the title, it'll take that name of your title and put it in your permalink, which is your address and your menu bar. We're doing it backwards. Something already existed and I want to change it. That's not bad and that's not wrong at all. But you have to take you have to think think of three things now. Editing your menu, editing the title, and editing the address. So I've done two of the three so far. I need to edit the address. How do you think I edit the address? <laughs> Just click edit. Yes. Yeah. Easy. It's easy to do, but it's easy to forget. Now, this address here is also known as the slug. I've mentioned that before. And before you change anything there, sometimes on screen you get a box that says slug. If you edit the slug, that's the same as clicking edit at the top over here, which we're about to do. It's either or. And the slug should be lowercase with no spaces. So if you were changing that to say sales confirmation, don't do this. It should hopefully put it back to lowercase with a dash. Uh, in between the words. That's the format it wants. Lowercase, no spaces. So it looks like this is smart now. I don't remember seeing this on older versions of Word <coughs> WordPress. It, I would see people type, you know, my shopping cart, and it would accept it with uppercases and spaces, and that would actually be bad. You don't want spaces in your addresses of your websites. That can cause problems, broken links. Some computers understand the space in an address and some don't. Instead of chancing that, the lowest common denominator is no capital letters, no spaces. If you need to separate words, dashes. And I don't recommend running it together like that. That does not help your SEO, search engine optimization. The search engines are going to look at this word as gibberish. There's no such word as my shopping cart in the English language. There is, however, my shopping cart. So don't run your words together like that. Separate them with dashes. Underscores are fine, but really what is best is dashes. And it seems to be smart enough to help you that if you type my amazing shop, that it will then convert it to the proper thing. I kind of don't trust it. I want to be safe that it's exactly what I want, so I would personally write it properly. No caps, no spaces, use dashes. Click Update on the right side. And now when I go back to the, uh, to the, to the front end, I see the address bar says that. <coughs> In this case, obviously, I just chose a name, My Amazing Shop. Doesn't make sense for what this is, but I'm showing you you can change it to anything you want. This really should be sales confirmation or sales receipt. It can be different. Your title here can say one thing and your address could say another. That's fine. So with that knowledge, I'm going to go edit the the shopping cart page itself, the, the you know the store catalog. If you go back to all pages, This should now show you that it's called sales confirmation. It's not called transaction results anymore. And I don't like it to be called products page anymore. So click edit there. Notice that short code right there. That basically runs through a lot of background code, a lot of background magic, and displays everything. Your thumbnails in different sizes and properly aligned, and your prices, and the buy now button, and all of that. We don't need to delve in and change any of that. We just have that short code, and then we've got 
all of our products. We don't want to change that. We're dealing with up here the title of this page and its permalink, its slug. I don't like products page for either of those. I'll call it the shop. And therefore I want to edit my permalink. Here I'll simply call it shop. I could call it the shop, but shop is better because that's sort of like a, a standard <coughs> whenever someone has some sort of website to sell something, usually there's a page simply called shop. You don't really want to get too cute with the shop or my amazing products or you know for sale today. Just keep it straightforward that your shopping cart, your catalog is called shop in the address, and then you can call that whatever you want, the actual title. Yes? To my knowledge, permalink means it's a permanent link, and what that means is that uh, for link integrity, uh, when the search engines search for something and find your page, they have a database of all of your pages. So when someone searches, you know, uh, kids clothes in San Diego, and you've got an address in your permalink that says kids-clothes, your address is found by Google and it's in their permanent database. You, there should be a link here that um, that those search engines or any website can always get back to, basically. They can always find it. That could cause problems when we make these changes because let's say we've had our website for a, for a year online. And for a year it said products page. Google probably found my page called products page and saved it into their database. And then now I've changed it to shop. That's a broken link. So We'll probably get to it in more detail later, but one of the plugins that I recommended, I haven't recommended it yet actually, but when we get to it, there is a there is a plugin that we can use to help us fix that. What if we do change our link? There's a broken link. Let's fix our links. There's a plugin that will help us with that. So long answer, but basically the permalink is your you know the official address to whatever page on your site. It's 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 should always be there and. Uh, if it, you ever change it, we have to deal with with redirections and break and fixing the links. That's right, but then uh, the backup is what, what I'll say about the um, <coughs> that plugin. That plugin really helps us um, keep track of all of that. Let's do one more thing here. For example, if you go back to the home screen, I like that the button says home. I think that's good, that, that's very obvious for people. Um, so I would leave the menu item as home, but perhaps on screen I don't like that it says home. What about a nice welcoming message there? So in that case I need to edit that page. Um, I haven't mentioned it here, but it, you should have noticed whenever you're viewing any page, you should see a button to go directly to edit that page. Either at the bottom there or at the top. That's a shortcut. I'm showing you the long way, which is to go back to the dashboard, to go to the um, uh, pages screen, to click edit on the page, and you're there, you know, three or four clicks. This is a one-click thing to get there. So in any event, I want to edit the home page. And look at that. That's why that says home on top there, because that says home. If we say here, welcome to indulgence, or whatever. Indulgence. Welcome to indulgence. And there's not really any text at the bottom here. We can add pictures, and bullet points, and graphics, and video, whatever. 
the sky's the limit about what we can add here. But I'm just showing you if you want that text to appear at the top of your page, it's simply editing the page title. Have you also noticed as you're editing a page, <coughs> at the top then it says view page. So when you're on the front end, it says edit page. When you're in the back page, it says view page. So that should be a quick way, hopefully, to get you to go back and forth between that. So click view page. There's a little trick to that, unfortunately, there. Um, it's a trick. What you want to do is push on the back down and on the front up. Kind of weird. Yes. Uh, so there we go. It says something more interesting than simply home. If you'd like to change any of those other items, you can go ahead and do so. Your account, maybe you call it my account, whatever you want. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, I want to make my cart even better. I want to make my products better, in that right now, all of them are on one page, the shop page. I want to set it up so that only cakes are in a cake screen, only pies are in a pie screen, and, and so forth. That needs a bit of a setup. So let's take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll do that. It's about 1.27. We'll be back at 1.37. If you need to print out any of the handouts, you can do so. <laughs>